Hello everyone, I'm Jonas and today I'll be doing an introduction to Matinee. Um, if you watch my combination lock video you've already seen some really basic stuff where we spun the uh, sort of rotators but today I'll be doing a couple of different scenarios as well as explaining more how Matinee works. So I have a sort of blue box set up here. I've got two uh, pillars which I will just use for take damage events. I have three different cameras. Um, I have a couple of interp actors um, at the bottom here. Now wait, these are static mesh actors, so I will fix that first. Uh, find in content browser and then just add as interp actor instead because apparently I forgot to change that. So we'll just position them like they were. Obviously the positioning doesn't really matter in this case because I will not really be using them for anything. Just to show you how um, how it works. So we take the left, left one as well, interpector, and then we position it to face the other one. Whoops. Uh, okay, it was the same one. Fiddle, fiddle, do whatever. I generally have a couple of problems in every video, so this is not something new. So there we have it. A couple of doors and um, trigger volume. I'm not sure how well this shows up in the video, but it's there anyway. Uh, and then I have another one as well as a particle system. Um, so matinees don't really do anything on their own. You have to trigger them through Kismet, which is why I made the Kismet videos first. Um, so if we go, um, I'll just drag this down and show you. I don't think it's in the video. Uh, so Kismet is the K with the arrow and matinee is the uh, clapper, I think. So as you can see here, no matinee sequences exist. So we go into Kismet and I will re... Uh, I don't know really where it's supposed to be, something like this. Um, so as you can see here, I have the trigger volume at the top. I have uh, two take damage um, events on the pillars to the left. But we will start with the uh, trigger volume touch. So what you do is you just right click, new matinee. And matinees always have uh, this um, data plugin, which is basically the timeline. Um, and then you have a few inputs like most um, most Kismet nodes. So what we'll do is just for on touch, you want to play this. Um, matinee objects also have um, sort of different preferences at the bottom here. Uh, so if you watch the uh, the uh, lock video, I used rewind on play, which. Um, basically just goes back to zero once you uh, complete it. Uh, no reset, so you don't revert the object, you just revert the um, timeline, basically. Um, there are a couple of different ones. If you want to change the play rate, for instance, after you've completed an animation, um, and if you want to work with um, sort of a longer matinee, you can also choose to start it at uh, a different time than zero. Um, because if you want to check something in-game, you might not want to look through the first 20 seconds every time you uh, start it. Um, I haven't really used most of the bottom ones here, so I'm not going to talk much about them because I don't really know what they do. Um, but yeah, so once you've created one of these in Kismet, you can actually close Kismet and then you can open it through the clapper here. And if you have several, you will have a sort of dropbox uh, from the clapper um, showing you the different ones. So if you name them in Kismet, uh, you will be able to select them from the menu. Um, so when you start Matinee for the first time, um, there are three basic windows. Um, you have your curve editor here at the top, which is empty because we haven't added any objects yet. Then you have your sort of object list. Uh, I'm not really sure what this uh, area is called. I can check up here. It's just on by default, so 
I'm not sure what it's called. And then you have your properties, which uh, I don't tend to use much. So if you just close it, you will have more space for um, different objects instead. Um, I would actually recommend if you're going to do much with Matinee, you should have a second screen because that way you can have your sort of game view up on your first screen and the entire Matinee window up on the other one and switching between Matinee and Gizmet. Because working on a single screen, if you're also working in like um, four split mode, um, where you have the four different windows, you will get crowded really quickly and you will have to sort of move around the matinee window a lot. But yeah, that's another topic. Um, so once you get into this uh, matinee window, you will have to add the um, the actors that you want to interact with. So if we click the door here, right click, and then you add a new empty group. Um, there are a couple of different uh, sort of available groups and I will show you how to use a couple of them later but for just moving objects uh, you will just add a new empty group you get to name it so door right and then you right click again and add a movement track uh, let's see where it is here so once you've added something here and you, as you can see here you have the five seconds every matinee you make will always default to five seconds for the doors, let's say we have the two. Um, and you will also always start with a keyframe. So these red arrows here are uh, keyframes. And if you've done any sort of work in a 3D environment or 3D uh, animation system, um, you will basically know how keyframes work. Um, and if you click on a keyframe, you can see in the bottom left here, it says adjust key movement zero. Um, this means that you're editing it. Uh, if you're clicking somewhere else, like if you're clicking on the one second mark where you don't have a keyframe and you move the door, nothing is going to happen. So if I move here and then I scrub the time frame by moving the black bar at the bottom, you can see the door just moves back because um, if you're not in edit mode, you're not going to change anything. But if I go to movement zero key, I move it a couple of steps, then I unmark it, and then I drag the slider. As you can see, it's now permanently in in that position instead. Uh, but what we want in this case is the door to be uh, next to the other door when we're starting the animation. And then we move the uh, time slider to two seconds instead. We hit enter to make a new key, and then you can see adjust key movement one. Uh, so then we move the one key and as you can see here I have uh, You can see the start position you can see the end position and you can see how it uh, transitions between the two um, This is because I have this green uh, I'm not sure what it's called. It's something like draw paths in 3d or something um, So as I toggle this one you will see the paths um, once you start working with uh, tons of different objects, you will have to basically toggle these on and off to make sure that you're not crowded. Um, and the second uh, zigzag thingy um, sends the curve to the curve editor. So if I click this, you can see it shows up at the top here, door right movement. And then if you hold the Z key and drag downwards, uh, you're basically, basically zooming uh, in one direction only. Uh, so it goes from zero and it goes, yeah, let's say 200 units down. Um, and you can also see how it moves. So if you hit the uh, the first key, no wait, yeah, if you hit click up here on the uh, sort of keyframe animation, um, the keyframe sort of gizmos in the timeline, uh, you will unlock a bunch of different objects or uh, a different ways to transition between the keys. Um, you have your curve, which is what every matinee starts with. Um, you have a curve user, which means that you can basically drag these to change how it interpolates between the different... So if I drag this one down, this one is the Z axis. 
uh, you can see it goes sort of weirdly down through the floor, uh, which is obviously not what we want. So we can, uh, if you're just working in one direction, you can sort of hide the other ones. Um, I'm just going to find this one so I can fix it. It's the blue one. So we go, uh, we can just put it to constant. Um, so you have your, as you can see here, if you change one of the um, one of the axes, you will change all of them. Um, which means that if we're now dragging on the door, you can see it doesn't move at all until it reaches the uh, the end one. Uh, that's how constant works. Then you have um, linear, which means it doesn't accelerate or anything. It just moves with the same speed from start to finish. Um, linear is better for uh, mechanical things um, because making something move smoothly um, is pretty hard if you're doing something mechanically but if you're doing something like character animation you will tend to want to use the curve ones because they have sort of smoothing paths which is more like uh, human moves but yeah so I have a linear linear track with the uh, with the first door oh yeah another thing um, there are two sort of um, ways of moving things relative to the world or relative to uh, initial frame so if I right click this one you can see either world frame or relative to initial um, I tend to always switch to world frame um, if you're starting a matinee it will always be relative to initial um, but what this means is that as you move, uh, let's say you move the first frame because it looks weird or you want to start it somewhere else. That means that every other frame is going to move as well. Um, so if you rotate the first one, um, everything will change. And the problem is that you will not notice this because um, UDK doesn't autosave while you're in uh, matinee. If I uh, close this one it will probably auto save automatically yeah there it was um, and it also changes as you save so if you go into this um, I'm not sure if I can show this here but let's say we switch up the the first one we just rotate it for a bit and then we close it we open it again there we have it. So as you can see, it now uh, rotates, but it still moves to the same um, la last position or same last keyframe. So let's say I go back, I close it, you open. Yeah, now it's obviously a bit off, but let's ignore that. And then we change it to relative to initial instead. And then we rotate this object now I think it should be yeah now it moves really weirdly because as you can see um, instead of moving the first frame it actually moves the second one so uh, I'm not sure in what case you actually want to use this I always I always set it to world frame and then just ignore everything um, because it's just much less of a hassle but as you can see this one is broken now because I changed it after it was weird um, yeah you will probably run into this several times and you will curse UDK I have no idea why they did that but so what we'll do here is we'll just delete this matinee um, we'll make a new one touch play and we'll set everything up again because it's actually easier than just fixing it once you've uh, broken it basically so let's do both doors this time um, you add an empty group door or, oops right you add empty group door left we add the movement track for each one and they should be where they are at, at zero uh, let's just raise the grid a bit and 
at two seconds. Let's just keyframe both of them and we drag them out. One, two, three, boom. And we also set word frame. So if I just move this off to the side for a bit, I will be able to show this off. Both doors are um, moving out. So we save this, we play in editor, and once I touch, they open. Yay, it works. Um, then we obviously want to close them again once you leave. Um, this trigger is obviously set up a bit weirdly, but um, let's do that. Not in matinee, but in kismet. Uh, basically, what you just do is you hook the untouched one up to reverse, and you set trigger volume touch max trigger count to zero. Uh, what this does is, whoops, not that one because it lags too much. Let's do this one, and we move up to them. They open. We move back, and they close again. Now this one will obviously not react instantly. Oh, it does. I thought it didn't. So it reverses. I thought it would finish, but it actually reverses from the position where it's at. So that one works. Um, let's move on to the next one. Uh, in this case, I will actually just show you. Um, let's go into Kismet and yeah. I forgot to mention this, but once you start adding objects to the matinee, it actually grows and you will get your um, interp actor, uh, which you can just plug in here. So if you plug in another object or several objects to the uh, to this input, it will receive the same um, animation. So uh, if you want to start doing um, doing the matinee with unfinished objects, like let's say you just add blue box doors, then you can plug in the actual doors once you have them finished. Um, but yeah, let's start with the other one. So take damage, you make a new matinee, and you hook it in. I'll just check so these are set to something reasonable. Yeah, damage threshold one and max trigger count. Uh, We'll probably go with one on this one. So we go into another matinee. Um, in this case, I will add this particle system. Um, so particles are, uh, they have their, uh, they have finished groups basically. Um, so particles always start with a toggle instead of um, an empty group where you start with nothing. But you will still have to add the movement track if you want it to move. So let's say we start with uh, five seconds, or we use five th seconds on this one. Um, the toggle um, matinee track works a bit differently. Um, basically what you do is you can toggle it on or off. So if you hit a keyframe, you will get a um, pop-up box. Um, so you can either trigger it, which basically uh, toggles, or then you can set it to be on or be off. So let's say that once uh, this starts the um, once the animation starts it will toggle on then it will be on for two seconds it will be off and then it will be on again uh, whoops yeah um, this is probably outside of the screen so I'll move it in uh, so if you click on one of these you will see um, the adjust key here and you can either set time, which is moves the uh, moves the key. You can see it, set it to four. You can set it to three. Um, and you can also flip toggle, which basically switches it between on or off. And as you can see here, while it's on, uh, a green line gets drawn. Um, oh yeah, I forgot to mention this, but you can set the uh, the grid snapping. Uh, to smaller units as well. Um, so 0.10 or 0 0.05 seconds. I just work in uh, half a second increments to make it more obvious. Uh, once you start moving uh, more pr 
precise animations, you will probably want to uh, reduce the size of the grid snapping as well. But yeah, uh, let's just make a s sort of weird movement track. Um, 250, it should be up here facing this direction. And uh, where the hell is my mouse? Oh, there it is. Oh, I can't see it for some reason. Yay, secret mouse. It only works outside the recording window, which is sort of awkward. Let's alt tab and see what happens. Oh, there it is. Um, yeah, so it moves weirdly to that side, then we move it again to over here, facing this direction. Um, now, if I move this out of the way, as you can see here, this is sort of a smooth curve, which is depending on how uh, or which uh, which of the interpolation modes you're using. So if we switch this to linear, you can see it becomes a straight line, but the next one is uh, smooth because you set the interpolation mode per keyframe, not per um, entire object. So you can switch an object between um, between these different modes depending on what you want to do with it. Um, so here we have another sort of really weird animation but let's roll with it. Um, so it's on for two seconds, off for one second and then on again. Um, so let's see how that looks. If we jump into it, um, this actually starts on because it's a particle system and it doesn't know that it's a matinee until you sort of start playing with it. So if you're creating particle system th systems that you don't want to be visible, you can basically place them outside of your scene and then have your first key be a constant, which just moves them from somewhere out in space into the level instantly. Uh, but yeah, let's shoot at this thing and we'll see if it... Uh, okay. Yep, it goes up, it goes away, and then it starts moving in. And then, as you can see, once the matinee, sh uh, matinee ends, it actually disappears because it assumes that uh, something that's off, uh, you don't want it to be shown. And you can probably see this here. Uh, I have two um, two different matinees to choose from if I click there. So we move the window back to something reasonable. And then we move on to the next one. Um, in this case, I will be using cameras. Uh, in these cases, I was just looking through the player, pers player, player perspective. English is hard, apparently. Uh, but in this case, I will be using um, cameras. And as you can see, once I plug it in here, you will get uh, the emitter. Um, so we use the take damage to play a new matinee. Uh, I'm not sure if I remember to set one, that one to world position. Uh, but yeah, it's just small things like that. Uh, so in this case, I will be doing uh, camera stuff, like I said. Camera groups um, are also available, I think. Maybe there are just empty groups. Let's right click and see. Yeah, new camera group. So we name them camera one. Oh yeah, they have a uh, field of view. Um, only cameras have this uh, the ability to have field of view tracks. That's why we add a new camera group. No, not field of view, camera two. And then we have the third one, camera three. Now, cameras don't actually do anything on their own, so if you just play this matinee right now, nothing would happen. Um, I can actually show you this. So if we start messing with this one, nothing is going to happen. And I'm sorry if I used the game sounds too, uh, so you can hear me. Um, but yeah, so you have your three camera plugins, but nothing happens. This is because you also need a direct group because the game doesn't know which camera you want to switch to and when you want to switch it. So if we right click here in the um, open space, we want to add a new direct group. Whoops, it's outside the window. 
it's at the bottom here, director group, boom. Um, the director actually happens and it's uh, sort of located outside of the um, the general object list because the director group is sort of its own thing. Um, and if we click the director up here, um, I'll just expand this for a bit. Let's say it's six seconds, so each camera gets two seconds. Um, if we go to zero seconds, so when the matinee starts playing, we just hit enter and we choose cut to group uh, camera one. Then you will see it becomes an orange, orange bar across the entire thing. So if we just close that and we play from here, yeah, as you can see it switches to the camera but the player can still move so he's shooting really weirdly because uh, the link gun actually uses sort of the aiming point and it doesn't react to camera and then after six seconds the matinee is over and you're thrown back out into the game um, so what we want to happen is uh, let's go into number three here so the first two seconds we use this camera and as you can see uh, once you start scrubbing so let's say you're over here if the director group is turned on Oh yeah, I forgot to mention it. But you can toggle each track individually using the checkboxes at the left side. So if we turn this off and start dragging the slider outside of the screen, nope, nothing happens. But if it's on, as soon as you do anything within the um, the matinee, um, you will see from the perspective that the director group is using at that point. Um, so if you're moving something really fiddly, you can just turn this off and you can go zoom in on that point and then you can uh, keep working. Um, so let's add another keyframe at 2 seconds, move to camera 2. At 4 seconds, we move to camera 3. Um, it picked a couple of sort of bad colors. Uh, each camera always has a different color, because, but this uh, weird purple one is too close to this purple one, in my opinion. So if I move this off to the side, um, you can see it sort of switches between the cameras. And now, um, as I said, each camera also has a field of view angle. Um, this is basically the lens. Um, so if you set this, um, as you can see here, once I keyframe, um, you can see it shows up in the window, but you can't actually change it from there. What you have to do is you right click on it and you set the value. Um, so if you go below 90, it will basically become a fisheye lens. Uh, no, wait, that's wrong. Uh, if you go below 90, it will become uh, zoomed in. If you go above 90, it will become zoomed out. So let's start with 50, and then that one is 90. And then this one is 130. Um, so yeah, if we hit space to play the anime, anime? No, matinee. The first one is zoomed in, then you have 90 degrees, and then you have this really weird fisheye. Um, so that is probably it for cameras. But yeah, as I said, you also get, the player can still do uh, can still control while the matinee is playing, which is not something we want in this case. So what we can do here is we can right click and we can add a event track. Now where the hell is that? I thought it was at the bottom here. Maybe we... Hello? A new event track. Oh, at the top. Um, event tracks work a bit differently because their basic uh, function is just to send things out to Gizmet. Um, so if we go to zero here and we hit enter, we get uh, to create a new key. Um, and this case we just say, we call this cinematic. Now if we close the matinee and we open Kismet instead uh, and we go to this one as you can see this one now has an output named cinematic that will fire uh, once we get to that point in the matinee 
Um, so in this case, what we want to do is we want to toggle uh, toggle cinematic mode, uh, enable target player, and once it's complete, we want to disable it again. Now, obviously, firing things at uh, zero is basically the same as just plugging this one into the cinematic mode, but I wanted to show off how the event track works. So, in this case, if we do play from here, yeah, as you can see there, it must close matinee. Um, it must do that uh, every time. Um, so, if we fire on this again, uh, you can hear the sound stopping and the player also disappears. I'm not sure if that's intended, but no, it's probably set to one uh, on max trigger count. But yeah, that's how the event track works. And obviously, uh, Kismet is where you're doing most of your uh, other things that aren't animation, like uh, spawning projectiles or playing sounds or. Um, I'm actually not quite sure how to do sounds properly because I haven't done any work with it. Um, but if you want to spawn things or do any sort of logic or uh, stuff like that, you do it out in Kismet and not in Matinee. Um, so just make an, an event track key where you want the output and then you uh, do your stuff in Kismet. Um, there are a couple of other director tracks as well. Um, so if I go here, we have a fade track, which goes uh, to black, uh, which is just mostly used for um, cuts and stuff like that. So if I set a key on the fade track, um, zero is showing the game and one is showing just black. So if we just do something like that, and then we set this one to zero, uh, if I scrub this, you can see it going from black to uh, the game view. So if we uncheck this box, uh, the fade disappears, and we can keep working. Uh, you also have a slow-mo track, which just shows things in slow motion. Uh, this one is also a bit weird, because um, value one is regular game time and if you lower this um, it goes slower and if you raise this it goes faster so it's not just slow-mo you can control uh, the entire playback speed just with this slow-mo track um, those are probably the uh, the most basic things and uh, using uh, these nodes you can pretty much recreate the entire uh, upload that I did of my matinee video. Um, so this is the introduction uh, which handles uh, the basic stuff. Um, I might do another one with uh, characters and how to animate those. Um, let's see how this one does. If you have any sort of feedback just leave me a comment or send me a PM and thank you for watching.